Roman land project, I researched the attire of a Roman married woman, and I'm Nahe Jun, I am in Dr. Tannenbaum's class, and I'm in Latin Dream. Okay, so as a Roman married woman, I am married to a Roman citizen, so I'm called a matrona. It's the term used for referring to a Roman married woman. And I'm 17 years old. Roman women were married by 12, actually. Some were married, some were married earlier. So there are three virtues for a Roman married woman. One of them is pudicia, it means sexual purity and devotion to your husband. The second one is obedience. It's, it means that although you might be unruly at home, in public places you have to be obedient to your husband. And the third one is pudor, which means decency and self-control at all times. You should suppress your emotions and be calm at all times. So this is a quote from from Pudicitas or something. It says, "All men rule over women. We Romans rule over all all men, and our wives rule over us." So this quote kind of shows how Roman women, although they have all these virtues in the home, they were like ruling over her husbands and stuff. So this is the stola, it's like a huge fabric you wrap around your body. It's held to shoulder, the shoulder by straps, and it resembles a modern slip, but only has a fuller skirt so it kind of flares around. And the really distinctive folds of the skirt is called a rugai. And on top of that you have your pala, which you wrap around your head. It's a head covering veil, and proper women should cover their head and Actually, in like 20 BC, a consul named Su because Gallus divorced his wife because she didn't wear the lapella in public places. So the Roman woman's hair, there's a strap going around. It's called fillets. It's usually white. And there were symbols of a chaste woman in Rome, the fillet and the stola. And disgraceful women, they couldn't wear stola like prostitutes. They were not allowed to wear stola, and instead they were white togas. So white toga was a sign of bad women. And wealthy Romans, wealthy Roman women, had their own hairdressers and style coordinators. So they worked really hard to like make their hair, hair prettier and stuff. And they also had hair dyes. You know, Italians are usually have they have dark brown hair but they wanted to make it blonde. So sometimes they used too much hair dye and their whole hair got lost and stuff. Yeah, and Ovis Poem was an ode to her girlfriend who lost all, all her hair because of too much dye using. So a Roman woman obviously did makeup. There's a quote that says, a woman without paint is like food without salt. So even in those ancient days, Romans, women had their own makeup. They had Fucus, which is like white plaster around their face to make it appear white. In ancient times, whiteness was a sign of beauty. And they sometimes dyed red to go around their, their cheeks and cheeks and lips, like lipstick in modern days. And they used the suit for their eyelashes and eyebrows, like mascara. And sometimes they coated all their makeup with dragon oil because it smelled really bad. Like they smell really bad. They were made of made up made up of all kinds of stuff like sheep fat, bread crumbs, calf genitals, sulfur vinegar, crocodile feces. It was actually really disgusting. And they also had jewelry. Um, mostly it was gold chains, bracelets, bracelets, and anklets. A um, wealthy woman could afford like precious metals, but like not wealthy women couldn't. So they used like colored glass or like cheap metals instead for their jewelry. They just kind of wanted to adorn themselves. And these are my works cited and this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.